Okay, y'all, fun times. Now I'm going to explain how to do the grass of the limnis 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 limniscates. I can't pronounce them. And that's these two. Notice that they have an R squared. And then the graph of the rows. Notice that it's a multiple angle. Okay. And then we also have the spiral. Notice it's R based upon an angle divided by pi. Now I'm going to go and change these because these angles are usually multiple angles, usually two. But even so, this is still called lemniscuit. I'm going to so in the moment I'm going to go ahead and change this to two times theta. All right. Notice something else. Because there are squared, that means to get R we're going to have to take the square root, which means we're going to have regions of the domain that are going to be excluded from the graph because square roots are negatives. So with cosines, anything between 90 degrees and 270 is excluded. And for sines, anything between 180 and 360 is excluded. Because again, we're going to get negatives and we can't square root negatives or we can't represent in the real world, in the real domain, values on with, with square roots and negatives. We have to use a complex number system, which we're going to be getting to sometime in this unit. Um, the second thing is, remember when you take the square root, it's always plus or minus. Alright, so at every single angle, we're going to get a plus and minus version, so we're going to have a radius pointing one way, and then in the opposite direction, the other way. Okay, now um, I provided some instruction on the PowerPoint um, on how to graph these using the generalized solutions method, but there's an easier way that's less complicated that I came up with that I'm going to show you when we get to this. All right, that's the background. Let me go now and instruct. Okay, now I said I was going to change these to two angle. I'll change this one to that because that doesn't necessarily have to apply. Okay, so we take the square root of this, and so we're looking for plus or minus two times the square root of the cosine. And that's gonna be a little bit problematic, but again, if we only use one zero, we don't have to worry about that. Now, we could do that, and then the cosine at the 60s is one half, square root of one half, right, is root 2 over 2, which is about 0.7, I think. All right, and then we got when we have the root 3 over 2, which is about 0.86. So the square root of 0.86 is uh, 0.8. Okay, so anyway, so all we care about is what these things look like. The maximum distance we're going to deal with is 2 and negative 2. Everything else is here is going to become the square root of a number less than 1. So we don't really need to know the exact values. Alright, so when this is 0, we get 2 and negative 2, so we get a point here, but we also get a point over here because of the negative radius. And then here we get zero. And so as we're sweeping out, you know, we're getting two times numbers that are less than one. So we're gradually shrinking the radius. So probably right here, it's right about there. And then probably right here, it's right about there. And this comes down to zero. So we get the first the color. All right. Now, Between 90 and 270, we get nothing. But remember, we also have negative radiuses. So what's the negative radius here? Well, that's sweeping out uh, this way. Because anything in 90, negative radius points 
within the third quadrant. <clears throat> okay, now when we finally get positive numbers for the cosine again, that happens between 270 and 360. All right, so you know, once again, we're going to get this side, and since we also have a minus, that the uh, fourth quadrant is going to point back to the third quadrant, so we get that. All right, so this is basically the graph. Now, the same thing with this one. So when we take the square root, we're going to have plus or minus 3, the root of this. Now, the only thing different about this one, it has 2 times that angle. All right, so we want to figure out, okay, when is this going to equal 1? So we want to find all the angles where that equals 1, and that's going to be the edges of our petals, and then we can just sketch the rest of it. Okay, well, that's going to occur only at that location, pi over 2, or uh, 90 degrees. So we want this to equal 90, and that. Now, if you want to use radians, you can. So divide by 2, you have that. Okay, so those are all the locations that will achieve what we want. Okay, so when we have this equal to 45, that's going to be when we get 0. Or 225, that's when we get 1. And then after that, we're going to get more than 360. And again, remember the general... Um, I don't, I don't want to call it a trick, but you know what we've noticed is that whatever the multiple angle is, that's how many solutions. So these are the two places. All right, that's when we have this equal to one, and so we get the square root of one times three. But remember, we're going to have plus or minus three. So at 45, and then the opposite. But notice 45 and 225 are the opposite, so then at 225 you get plus or minus 3, so the boom, boom, so then this is the graph. Okay, those are called lemniscates, or lemniscates. I can't pronounce it. Um, I could probably tell you, right, but you can look that up yourself. You know, people pronounce words in different ways all the time. You say tomato, I say tomato. Who's wrong? To me, that's a lemniscate like a biscuit. Alright, now this is the same thing. The difference is there's no plus or minus. But we're interested in all the locations where the sign is 1 or negative 1, and that's going to be the maximum values. Okay? And then remember, every 360 degrees is a rotation. And each of these 360 degrees is split up into 90 degree locations. Right? And so, what times 5 would get 360 is what we want to find out. And that will tell us the interval of the unit circle when it goes from 0 to that number that causes this to be 360. Okay, so the first thing we do, now I'm using degrees here, just because it's probably easier. All right, so every 72 degrees, we go one unit circle. Now, we only care about these two locations because that's when we get 10 and negative 10, which is when we're going to get the edges of our petals. So if we know those, then we could just do our little loopties, right? Much quicker. Okay. Now, we're going to get five of these, right? Just like this. And then we're going to get another five, because we also have the negative one. Here we were only looking at one. Okay? Every four quarters is a unit circle. This is the width of a unit circle. This is what's multiplied by five to get 360. So from zero to 172, we go around the circle, and we're gonna have two petals 
resulting from that. Well, where are they located? Well, let's divide this by 4. Okay, and that's how we're going to get our quarters. So that's what, uh, 36, 18. So every 18, so we go 0, and then plus 18, and then plus 18, and then plus 18, and plus 18, we're back at 72. And then we keep doing that. All right, so 0, 18, 36. Uh, I'm going to add 20 and subtract 2. So 440. Wait, am I adding 18 right? Did I divide right? Oh. And I got stuck because I knew that should have been 72. Okay, so that's the first unit circle. Now here's the second one. All right. We start at 72. And we keep adding 18. I'm going to add 20 and subtract 2. Okay, and this should be double that. And it's a good check to make sure you've been things in goofy. Okay, we'll do this again. 3. And we'll start at 144. Add 20 and subtract 2. Okay, and again, we should be able to add 72 to 144 to get 216, so we know we're doing this right. Okay, we're going to do this until we get all the way to 360, and that will exhaust all the possible values for the angle in the domain 0 to 360. Remember, that's what we're looking for. And so this is just mapping out what they're located by taking one period, dividing into quarters, and then just going ahead and adding the quarters you're going to get five cycles, and then the fifth one will end at 360. So all the possible. All right, so then we start with 216. And again, I'm going to add 20 and subtract 2. should be able to add 72 to get 298. And finally, all right, add 20 and subtract 2, so this should be 316. Uh, this is 334, and this would be 3. Oh, I think I made a mistake somewhere. Let me see. So 3. Oh, Where did I make a mistake? Between subtract two. All right, I'm gonna stop this and figure this out.